welcome to this lecture in the alumni leadership lecture series. Um, we have been having an embarrassment of riches. Um, as you know, we have had several outstanding speakers, and uh, today's speaker, Lalit Chodia, is, uh, is one more illustrious alumnus who's going to talk to us today. And um, on Friday, we have another lecture in this series, Dr. Vishi Pusala, who is the head of uh, Bell Labs India, will be giving a lecture. That's at 4 o'clock in CLT. So please try to attend that lecture as well. Um, Dr. Lalit Chodia is a, a B.Tech in chemical engineering from IIT Madras in 1980. And he received his uh, PhD from Carnegie Mellon in 1985. But I have been instructed that before all that, he was an alumnus of, or he was a graduate of Vidya Mandir, Mailapur. And I understand we have other alumni of Vidya Mandir here. Can you please stand up? <laughs> Not too many, I gather. So, um, Lalit has actually been very active in the area of supercritical technology. Actually, in my previous life, when I was with IBM in San Jose, I did some work with the Suprex Corporation, which is the company that uh, he was running at that time. And um, we had some very good experiences using Suprex's supercritical technology. Uh, we were actually trying to remove oil from coils, if I remember right, using supercritical extraction. And it actually worked very well for us. So, <clears throat> uh, so for the last 25 years, uh, Dr. Chodia has been uh, pioneering research and development in many commercial applications of supercritical technology, which, by the way, is a green technology, as I'm sure Lalit will uh, explain during his talk. Um, I'm, I think he's going to cover most of his um, entrepreneurial career during his talk, so I won't steal his thunder. He has received several awards. In 2002, the U.S. Small Business Administration Office named him the Small Business Exporter of the Year. Uh, this was a competition where he was up against companies with up to 500 employees, and you had, what, 50 or something like that? Um, also, that same year, his company, Thor Technologies, with Dr. Chodia as the primary investigator, also won a prestigious NIST, that is National Institute of Standards and Technology, Advanced Technology Program Award to develop a novel cooling technology for electronics. He's also the co-founder of the U.S.-India Forum, which uh, promotes business and political cooperation between the U.S. and India. He's an adjunct research scientist at the Robotics Institute in Carnegie Mellon. He's been featured in several um, international publications, including Fortune. He's also very active in numerous civic as well as educational organizations in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where he lives. Um, so it's my, it's my pleasure to welcome Lalit to the campus today. Uh, by the way, the most important accomplishment, he is also a distinguished alumnus of uh, IIT Madras, an award that he won two years ago. So it gives me great pleasure to invite um, Lalit to deliver his talk. Thank you, Dean uh, Nagarajan. Uh, it is indeed my pleasure to be back here at uh, IIT Madras. Uh, and the one thing I really want to say, I have the fondest memories of my life right here in IIT Madras. We had a great time uh, in the chemical engineering department, which was probably one of the easiest departments on the campus. I don't know if it's still true. <laughs> Fortunately, the HOD is not here, so I can say all of these things. <laughs> I hope uh, it's as easy as I had. Every afternoon, we just sit down and chat and talk about solving all the world's problems. It, anyway, I graduated from IIT in 1980. Shall I do guest? So what I wanted to talk to you guys about, uh, you know, I've always been an entrepreneur. It's been a lot of fun being an entrepreneur. 
it's, I'm not going to say it was easy being an entrepreneur. It was tough at times, but uh, if you have the right spirit, you can do it. And uh, I would strongly urge a lot of you to start early, not late. Uh, because it's actually, when you're going through a struggle, it's a lot easier to struggle uh, at your early, earlier stages than at a later life, so. And there's some anecdotal, anecdotal evidence, uh, like uh, Steve Jobs, who you know, quit uh, their bachelors and started a company, so you never know, one of you guys might end up in the same situation, too. So what I'm going to do is give you a background on what I have done and almost in my batch, I'm one of the few people who have done engineering work or still doing engineering work. Most of my colleagues are either in a, who took an MBA in management or um, gone off to more interesting uh, software fields. But hardcore engineering, I still continue to do that and I think there is a lot of potential of starting companies. And, and I'll show you how many different things I have done which means uh, you guys can do the same thing too. Nothing stops you from doing that. And uh, at the end, of course, I'd like to just say a couple things on what different lessons I've learned uh, during this last uh, 25 years of uh, starting various companies and give you some pointers from my perspective. So I went to CMU from directly from here uh, in 1980. In 82, I met a friend and he said, Lalit, I want to start a company. I said, I'm working on the supercritical, which has nothing to do with my PhD thesis, something that I was working on the side. Uh, let's extract some spices with supercritical CO2. And of course, he had a blank face. What is supercritical? What is CO2? Uh, it is CO supercritical, the critical point. Uh, you guys have done physics by this time. So if you are above cr critical point, critical pressure and temperature, that's called supercritical. And for CO2, it's 31 degrees and about uh, 770 uh, bar. So as long as you're above that, it is supercritical and it is a wonderful solvent. It's a solvent that you and I breathe in and breathe out. It's non-toxic, it's inexpensive, it's organic, it's green. And of course, in 1980s, nobody gave a, gave a damn about being green. Today, everybody talks about being green. But at the time, nobody did. So uh, when Ray came and said, Lalit, I want to do something, I said, this is what I'm working on. Let's do something. And luckily uh, for us in the US at the time, the National Science Foundation had a very interesting grant uh, where small businesses, they would help and give small amounts of money so on 14th night, we decided to write this grant, which was due on the 15th. Typically what we would do in IIT, do the previous night. We wrote it, submitted it, and guess what? We got funded. So since we got funded, we had no choice but to start this company. <laughs> and this company, we named it Suprex. So we had to pick a name in a hurry, super critical extraction, what the heck, we'll call it Suprex. So that's why we ended up at Suprex. So we funded this company. In 1982, while I was still a student, struggled. Uh, I graduated in 85, joined the company. I had no choice since I started the company. I had to join the company. Uh, we are still struggling, and uh, by the end of 85, we raised a bunch of money, and then lots more money. And by 1990, we have raised $12 million. And this is what happens when you pick a project where it didn't go in the right direction. You get diluted so much, it's as good as you're working for somebody. So whenever you raise money, you have to be careful of what the dilution factor is. Then I looked at it and said, Geez, this is not what I started out with. Uh, I decided to quit in 1990, but the continue, uh, company continued for a few more years, and it was sold in 1995. So if you look at this photograph, I look a little bit different over there. I'm the guy on the right uh, next to the lady. So if you recognize me there, that's me over there. And uh, this is probably in 1986 or so, 1986. So that was my first company. So I quit uh, Suprex to start Thar. Uh, Thar was in 1990. This time I said, no venture capital. I'm going to do this my, by myself. And I wouldn't recommend that because it was tough uh, for seven years. Uh, we struggled with little or no money, but uh, 
had to figure out what, what is it that I'm going to do. Tried a lot of different things. And finally, uh, one of my mentors came and said, Lalit, you have struggled too, for, too hard. Here's a check for a million dollars, which he gave it to me. And from there, we built the company. And that is the only investment we took in the company till we started uh, expanding it in, uh, into multiple different uh, company spin-offs. My first spin-off was Thar Instruments. Uh, Thar Instruments uh, used the core technology of the supercritical, but we did not do extractions per se. We did uh, analytical separations. In other words, if you gave me coffee, I would tell you how much caffeine is there. Uh, if you gave me hops, uh, I can tell you how much hop extract is there, or if you gave me beer. Uh, so we were doing analytical instrumentation. We use CO2, which is a non, it's a, not a solvent, uh, zero global warming potential, zero ozone depletion potential. So we used this and built an instrumentation company, uh, which you see one of the instruments on the right over there. That's an extraction system. Uh, and the reason we were successful is really we picked a field which was very difficult. So we didn't have too many competitors, high pressure, not too many people were interested in doing. Uh, so it was a great barrier to entry. Uh, because we were unique, we had good margins. Good margins uh, means good profitability. So equipment plus service uh, got us a lot of uh, good recurring revenues. So this is what we did. And uh, we grew from three to 50 people, then over about 100, uh, 150 people with offices in four countries. We, cons we had a major competitor. Uh, and the competition was so bad that when these guys put the comp uh, competitor on the marketplace, nobody wanted to buy them because they didn't want to compete with Thar. So we ended up acquiring them, consolidated, consolidated the two companies into one, and finally we had an $8 billion company buy, buy this Thar Instruments, a division of Thar, in 2009. So that worked out very well. So what I'm trying to say is you need to have a goal on whatever you're trying to do. Is it you're trying to build this for short term, buying to build this for long term? Are you going to sell the company? Are you going to keep it as your lifestyle? So you need to plan this out. And as far as instrumentation was concerned, we had made up our mind that we really needed to package it and sell it. And we drove it in that direction. So your ultimate goal that you have in mind, you always have to keep it in focus. The second company that we started is in a Thar process. Process is the larger version of, ex of the analytical instrumentation side. So in this case, if you gave me coffee, I'll give you decaffeinated coffee in bulk. Uh, if you gave me hops, I'll give you hops extract for beer. Uh, if you gave me spices, I gave you spice extract. So that's what this company, we built, uh, we were designing, building all of this in Pennsylvania. Uh, high pressure equipment, high pressure pumps. Again, this was unique uh, because it was all stainless steel. So we had a great marketplace. And that's what we are doing now is selling this all over the world. We sell into India, China, Malaysia, all built in the US. The uh, current business model that we have is we're selling equipment. The problem with selling capital, exp uh, very highly capital intensive exp uh, equipment is the uh, cash flow goes up and down. When you get an order, you have a lot of money. Uh, when you don't have an order, you don't have enough money. And it just cycles around up and down, uh, which you really have to be very good to manage. So about a year ago, we decided to make a shift.